Hello everybody, this is your boy FT Wally bringing you another audio commentary. This is on the map of Raid. Actually, dude, I got like... I love it how I just said dude. But anyways, I got like over four gameplays on just this map. Um, this is the best one that I got today. And it was all today, and four of them in a row. So I think I got actually, overall, I got like six gameplays that I could have chosen on this map. But I only saved three of them, and I'm just going to have to space them out and put them up. But it's against different people, too. It's not like it was the same guys every single time. But, oh, look at that. That was really bad. Um, I'm first going to talk a little bit about my my background. Because this topic um, kind of deserves to be talked about by someone who deserves to talk about it, if you know what I'm saying. So I want you guys to know why I am allowed to talk about... Um, what roles people should be playing in Call of Duty. So um, that's so. First off, let's talk about me. So I came from a uh, game battles background. I started game battles in COD 4. We were absolutely awful. It, it didn't start out like we were doing really good. No, we were really bad. Like we were lucky to go like 10 and 0. That was like I think like our best record. And then we kicked someone on the team, and then we did even worse. And so I played COD 4 game battles through through World at War. Which, um, which I don't know if that was a good thing or not. I mean, we got really good at COD 4, so whenever MW2 is out, we'd actually even go be able to go back to COD 4 and do really well. So that was fun, but we never really played World at War. I think I got up to 10th prestige in that game public-wise, and that was playing just on and off, you know, not going really hard in it. And so... And I was on a really bad team with some people named Ant-Man and Awesomeness. Ant-Man 117 and Awesomeness 1498. Alright, that's how bad it was. Then MW2 came out, and I started playing with some better people. Uh, bad to the Bone 95 was pretty good. And yeah, he had numbers in his name, but he was still pretty good. And um, we played with Bad to the Bone 95, uh, OxyClean, AE Heretic, which is now practically a pro player. And so we were doing really good. And when Black Ops came out, we played a little bit more. Um, and we didn't really like that game. So we went back to MW2 and we did really well. This was when Game Battles was still Game Battles. And it, you know, had GB ranks. And so I got all the way down to like an 18k, I think. Or 28k. One of those two. And then my account got hacked. Or not hacked. I think it was just I forgot the password and it wouldn't work. But I got it all the way down to a 28k. And um, then I went to go pub stomp with people. This was about a year ago. I went to pub stomp with people. About a year and a half ago. Um, me and Squeak Ola, who is really good now. He plays with a bunch of tournament teams and stuff. And uh, they're pretty good. And so I brought him out of this YouTube thing. They had a team called HDA. And so I did my first commentaries on there, and my name was Glockproof. But at this point, I was already doing pretty good in GB matches. You know, I was, um, and it wasn't really until MW3 came out that I started going top page pretty regularly. Um, I had my first top page team on MW3. We played No Perk Radar, um, which is a lot of fun. If you haven't played that, you should probably go play it. <laughs> and we went top page, and then we got beat, and so everyone like left the team, even though we were still like 51 and one. And then uh, I went back to MW2 and had a bunch of top page teams, like basically back to back to back to back. Then Black Ops 2 came out. As soon as Black Ops 2 came out, I started playing GB because you had all your weapons unlocked. I went top page in that game, even though I only played 10 matches. Uh, my team literally grinded one whole day, and they went top page. So even though I, I didn't necessarily play all those matches, I still went top page and did did my thing. And so I've been on two top page teams since that team, and have been just... Um, now I'm doing the YouTube thing. I still want to do GB, and I, I kind of want to intertwine competitive and, game ba or, and YouTube, because I feel like that's really important, and people like seeing competitive now that there's kill streaks so um, I wouldn't do GB variant though or MLG variant whatever they call it now I'd probably just do search um, but anyways back to the topic so if you gotta know your role when you're going into a Call of Duty game and you design your classes based off of that role guys like you don't want to go in with a swarm canine unit load star and you be the kinda guy that just literally rushes up onto B and dies 
trying to control it. All right, you don't want to do that. What you want, okay, notice I'm 29 and 3. Look at the score at the end of the game. Just a little hint right there. So, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so know your roles, meaning know whether you're an OBJ player, a slayer, a support player. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're someone who controls the map, here's my idea of a perfect team. Two slayers who uh, usually run assault rifles. But um, notice here I'm not actually running an assault rifle, and I have some high kill streaks on. And that's because I play Slayer and OBJ, meaning I'm pushed up onto the enemy team, like right here, and I just hold choke points. You know what I'm saying? There's not really a name for me. Um, I think the closest thing would be support. But, like, so I'm pushed up here, and I'm practically in their spawn. My job is to keep them in their spawn. Now, at the same time, my job is to hold flags. So that's what I've, I've been doing on this map, and it's came with such great success, you know, because before I was an only assault rifle person. Now that I'm playing with a team, I'm enjoying submachine guns a lot more. I'm able to keep my streaks and, and you know, have a lot of fun that way. No, I just keep spraying. But, uh, so, you know, you can't have all... Your entire you can't have your entire team running SMGs and pushing up into their spawn because they're gonna keep switching spawns and you, you could even get beat that way. You need some people that are gonna stay on B no matter what and circle B. You need some people who are gonna keep the enemy team in their spawn. You need some people who are able to um, to hold down flags and then you also need the people who are able to just rush flags. You know who don't necessarily worry about kill streaks, who run UAV, counter UAV, and um, a lightning strike or some, something like that. Basically like a Woody's gamer tag, because Woody plays the objective so much, he almost plays it stupid, you know? And so what I focus on is, you know, I play the objective. Look at me. I'm right here where their entire team is. I may be in the back of the spawn, but I'm in the back of their spawn. I play the objective. I don't stupidly cap the flag. I wait until, you know, it's smart. Because you don't want to just run and capture the flag and die because you're going to lose map control. Now, if I stay right there and we say we didn't have C, and I just kept killing them over and over and over again, that's keeping them at C until my teammates can get up there and help me capture the flag. That's playing the game smart. That's not being um, stupid. That, that doesn't mean I'm camping. No, not at all. I'm waiting for the right time to do it. And same thing for B. If you're the only one at B and the enemy team can easily kill you, why would you rush in there and die? Because all you're doing is losing map control. If you stay there in a head glitch on the far right side and pick, up, pick them up as they run at you, that is so much more helpful for your team. Anyway, this has been your boy FT Wally. Peace.